As former Vice President Atiku Abubakar emerges the presidential candidate for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, some groups expressed their displeasure. And crisis reportedly erupts in the all-progressive Congress, APC, over its presidential primaries as new chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, is accused of refusing to implement the National Working Committee's decisions. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacol. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar emerged the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the 2023 elections in the party primaries held over the weekend. He won with a total vote of 371 votes out of the 767 accredited votes to defeat his closest rival, the Riva State Governor, Nyeso Mwike, who polled 237 votes. However, with Atiku being a northerner, clinching the ticket at a time when uh, Southern elders are asking um, for a, a presidency, therefore, leaders in the South and Central regions in the country under the auspices of the Southern and Middle Belt Forum uh, have described Atiku's win as an affront to the people of the South, and they have asked politicians in the region to reject any nomination for the office of the vice president. Well, joining us to discuss this is Samo Wanusike, the executive chairman of Equiria Local Government Area in River State, and Ahmed Buhari, former presidential candidate of Sustainable National Party of Nigeria, SNP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank uh, you. I, great, great. I'll start with you, um, Samuel. Let's look at what transpired um, over the weekend um, in Abuja with the emergence of the former Vice President um, Atiku Abubakar. Uh, for some people, it came as a surprise. For some others, it's, it's something that they expected, being that he had um, been emerging for the past um, three election cycles as the uh, flag bearer for the People's Democratic Party. But then your principal uh, was in the running for that ticket um, were you surprised? No, no, no. <clears throat> why, would I, why would I be surprised? I'm a, I'm a politician. I'm a member of the People's Democratic Party. Um, we went to uh, a program. We went with um, um, our whole mind and our body as politicians. And as politicians, we always tell ourselves we will go for every election that we will win. And so when we get to the floor of the House and things go the other way. We manage up and we continue. For us, what's important is the party. Like I said, so Governor Zimbabwe so has said several days, that in a transparent process, whoever emerged, he would work for the party. He has repeated this a while ago when he was received by the people of River State with a rousing welcome. He told them clearly that he stands with the party and that it's unfortunate that the same certain elders who are clamoring for uh, uh, power to be brought back to the South, fail to have the mechanism of calling those people that were elected as governors from the Southern states to come and stand by and do that which they have told the people of the South that they will do. So are, they, are you are you insinuating that the Southern governors are you saying that Southern governors didn't cross the length and breadth of this nation. And it was clear that he was an accepted candidate, not for the stepping down of Tambua in that election when the process had begun. And Moise Mwike was cruising to victory. Even Atiku himself confirmed it. Even his supporters and followers had to go, especially go and thank Tambua, who gave up his own votes and told his people to turn their votes to Atiku Abubakar. And so that's what changed the narrative. And we give God the glory. We are not part of it. But nobody should come and deceive anybody in the South that certain are taking the position. There's no position anybody is taking. Because if, if we 
actually taking position, the governors from the South who voted against the Southern candidate who they knew that had the capacity and competence to manage the resources of Nigeria and to bring victory to the people of Nigeria, who I would have done it before, they would have stick with him. They would have. But that is history now. As politicians, we we'll work for our party. We we'll work for the People's Democratic Party to win. And by the grace of God Almighty, the will of God will be done in our lives. Um, Honourable Wanamusike, I just want to push you further. Um, you talked about, you know, the South Southern leaders not standing by their Southern candidate. I mean, we saw Governor Fayeshi also in the running. We saw Governor Odom Emmanuel of Akwaibom also being in the running. Um, of course, you ex you'd expect their delegates to support, you know, their governors. But again, when you say that there is no position by Southern leaders, what does that mean? And if any, all that you've said is anything to go by, what does that also say about you and the people in the South? Are we really ready um, for this um, presidency that we have all been agitating for? We are not ready as far as I'm concerned. Because it doesn't make sense that a governor from the South will sit with his colleague governors and take a position and say, this is what we want at Southern they called the first meeting. In fact, the first meeting was called in one of the Southerners who decided to vote the other way in his own state was the first place where that position was taken. And he, after standing strong to host the Southern governors and taking a position, he ended up showing to the people of South that he was just deceiving them. He was interested in his personal gain because it is clear from the statement I can to Jimmy Milaye a while ago, in a program uh, called Journalist Hangout in TVC, he said clearly that Delta State Governor, uh, Delegate and Delta State Governor voted for Atiku Abubakar 100%. Hmm. So when you, look, when you look at the trajectory of the election, imagine a Governor Dom and Governor Kowa and the Governor of Bayasa State closing ranks with the Governor of River State. <laughs> what would have been the result? Okay. The Governor of would have won. So, oh. for us, that boy is aware that this election is not for him to win. But he has decided to play the game he wants to play without his this right. He has decided to play the game he wants to play to serve the interest that he feels he should serve. Okay. But it's a lesson for us to be sad to learn. That's okay. Your concern. Just for as well as a week as the Governor of Iba State never came into the streets. Because he was a Satan. It was the Satan governors and their team that agreed that this is the turn of the South. And so we must stand out to support one of our own. Okay. All right. And I want to say clearly for the other governors and all of our brothers from the South, like the Southwest, who stood out to say we will stand with the truth. Nobody can change the goalposts in the middle of the match. We want to commend them. We have their records, we know them, and as young politicians, we have it in our mind to tell the history and the stories of what transpired a few nights ago. All right. All right, let me. All right, let me go to um, Mr. Bahari. Mr. Bahari, looking at the caliber of persons who um, were running for that particular ticket um, uh, on, on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, including uh, someone you supported firmly, um, did they really stand the chance as, as opposed to uh, a, the former vice president who uh, some would say has had a long political history and, of course, um, somewhat may reverberate uh, across the country? So I think um, one of the things that is very really important to note is the fact that um, all the other people were running against an aspirant who has been to the primary poll seven times. And so that actually distinguishes him from most of them who were given their shot at for the first time. Um, indeed, he proved to be an expert in this game, but more than anything, what I want us to realize is that even though he had more popularity than the rest of them, that was the major reason why those of us who were clamoring for the emergence of the, of the Southeast president were saying vehemently that we wanted 
the parties to zone the 2023 election to the council, believing that it will make it very easy for the entire country to work together for the emergence of a southeastern. Do not forget, to go back to history, in 1999, there was a lot of agitation from the Southwest. And as a result of those agitations, the country came together and presented two Southwesterners, two women, at that, at that election, which was and the And in 2007, when Obasanjo wanted to have a shelter, the entire country came out and stopped him. Requesting that a collaboration and present new candidates. And at that time, we Omar Musa and Muhammad Buhari. I think that we're having connection problems with your line, Mr. Buhari. So I'm going to go back to Mr. Wanosike, um, mm. you know, and then we will hopefully get you back to continue. Um, so, Mr. Wanasike, let me come to um, the issue of um, former Senate President Ayim Pius Ayim. Now, he put out a statement, of course. He congratulated um, Mr. Um, Vice, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar uh, on his winning um, the party tickets for the PDP. But he also spoke about, you know, um, issues within the party. In fact, he spoke about you know, considerations for voting a president in the party. He talked about burning issues, that Nigerians within the party were not focusing on burning issues. Um, he, he said that instead they were focusing on old primordial sentiments, and these are his words. So I ask, if what he speaks of um, during the primaries, if this is what has been happening within uh, the PDP, um, if he, were, if he came down to us looking at burning issues as spoken about by these particular candidates, do you think that maybe um, certain people would have had more votes at the end of the day? Because, I mean, I listened to all of the speeches, uh, and so many of these candidates um, had very interesting speeches. But is it really about speaking on these burning issues or about the capacity and ability uh, to carry out you know, or bring solutions to the table? Well, let me say clearly, um, my FIM is, is an elder, and so I will choose my words. As a former Senate president, where he understands where he's speaking from, but for the PDP of today, the only problem we had was that there were those who decided to shift the goalposts at the middle of the match because they wanted to retain power. Our worry as young members of the party is clear. Democracy is in three fronts. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Electoral Act, and the Constitution of the Party. And if the Constitution of the Party says that in every time there's an election or an electionary contest, that for equity and justice and fairness, power should be zoned the North or the South. It, it was based on this concept that in 2017, prior to the 2019 election, the PDP met and zoned their presidential candidate to the north. And that's why no certain candidates showed interest. But where all these matters we are discussing now are issues of the past as far as I'm concerned. Because what do you mean that what, what do you mean by no southern candidates showed interest? In 2019, PDP primaries, no certain candidates showed interest. It was a battle between the Northerners. Okay. And we backed, we backed Amin Otambua. It is a known story, a known fact, and you are aware that the governor of River State even made enemies because of the, the aspiration of Amin, Governor Amin Otambua of Sokoto State. But ironically, uh, Governor Amino Tampua is the one that came and turned the table when he has seen clearly after the Atari Nights meeting in Abuja that even the Northern delegates 
we are telling them clearly that their interest is to vote Governor Zeboye soon. Okay, we are of all the late night meetings that were held in the houses of a lot of northern leaders, both military, former military leaders, and even current northern leaders, locking themselves in different places in Abuja and different parts of the north, and looking for formulas to dislodge Governor Zeboye Who, in their own I'm statement, I'm going to ask my question again in case you didn't get my vote. question. My question was. The former Senate president is saying that if these party primaries and voting was based on burning issues as opposed to prime model um, sentiments, that then, of course, it would be free, fair, and credible, and the right people will emerge. As much as he congratulated Atiku Abubakar, he's saying that these votes were based on sentiments. Now, I'm asking, if we, it came down to voting based on burning issues, I mean, because like I said, a lot of people had very interesting things to say, but is that the only thing that voters should go by? Well, I, I want to say clearly to you, Uma, in, in further answering this question, because I think I've answered it, maybe Robin, this suits you. See, there's what we call party primaries and it's electionary. It is called internal party contests. In internal party contests, you throw issues to convince party followers and party members and party delegates. It's different from the issues you will raise when it has to do with the general election. I want you to get that clear. Okay. The issues he's calling pre primordial sentiments, if he's saying that he has not contributed enough in the party, yes, people will talk about it. If we say that he has abandoned the party in the past, when the party had crisis, yeah, people will talk about it. <laughs> if we also say that the party has a constitution that says power should be either zoned to the north or to the south, we must talk about it. Because if we, are, if we don't have in our constitution, then it will be foolish for us to talk about it. So there is not like primordial sentiment in voting. Okay. The, vote, the voting process is convincing party delegates. Because in the all, overall interest of the party is supreme. In, okay. In, Every of our presidential candidates are qualified to be president of Nigeria as we speak. But when you have two things, one must be better than one. Okay. Let, let so we are happy that even the man who today has clinched the ticket of the party has confessed that in all his political life, for the very first time, a young man from the South has stood all tall, has been accepted okay. far north. I've now set it far west. All right. I've now set it far east. I, I and think, that man is going to bring the so we can. I think that we have Mr. Ahmed Buhari back. Uh, Ahmed, can you hear me? Oh, my goodness. I think we lost him again. But let's move on to other issues. Um, let's look at the issues of 2023. Um, I mean... In 2022, we're, we're all getting set for the elections come next year. And... Um, at, at this point in our history, again, um, what should be front and center for our political aspirants, whether they be running for governorship, whether they be running for presidency, uh, House of Representatives? Because again, we see that the delegate system is what uh, finally throws up whoever the party feels as a candidate. And then, of course, the voters are at the mercy of whoever the party um, you know, fields for us. And so we have to pick, uh, you know, between the lesser of evils, uh, for, permit me to use that word loosely. Um, but should we not in any way be talking about um, how educated enough the, the delegates in political parties should be sensitive also enough to be able to pick the right person? Again, not just because of what they have done within the party, but if they're capable to run a country. I ask because... We have President Buhari, who everybody, literally everybody, spoke up for and said, oh, he's capable of doing certain things and changing the course of things in Nigeria. I'm wondering, has he been able to fulfill that? And if the PDP and every other party does not look at that from a delegate system, will we really be able to get the Nigeria of our dreams? Well, um, <clears throat> it is obvious, like uh, you say, it is true that most, most of the delegates need to be properly educated um, because I believe if you have high level of awareness, most times 
it will be difficult for you to compare people to do voting based on ethnic nationality or religious orientation. And so it is very, very important that political education must be part of the things they can be aware of what is expected of them. Having said this, we must understand one thing in democracy. If we truly want to practice this democracy, which is a broad culture, which we understand that is even the best, simplest of form for people to govern themselves, we shouldn't borrow some parts and throw some away. No. For instance, in the American system, when they say in the Republican Party, these are our rules and our regulations. They stick to it. When they say in the, in the uh, Democratic Party, these are our rules, our regulations, these are our ideas, they stick to it. We are saying that people should please allow the rule of their political party stand. You don't change the goalposts at the middle of any match. It's not acceptable. And I think what we see going on in this country will only change if a lot of leaders stand up to say, never again will we allow ethnic sentiment, religious sentiment, and the color of a man's skin and his tongue decide our conscience during voting. No. Interesting. We should be able to look at people based on the content of their character, their capacity and their sincerity, when they say they can do a job, it was all President Buhari promised Nigerians. They have not done anyone. No one, not one. And that's why we're saying all his candidates put together, who have worked with him, none of them are qualified to be president of Nigeria because they were there with him. Okay. okay. When he had the opportunity to manage Nigerian resources for eight years and nothing has been offered to Nigerians. All right. Let me try again. I think we now have Mr. Ahmed Buhari. Mr. Buhari, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Um, quickly, I just want to squeeze in two questions to you. Um, I, 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 like I posed a question to Mr. Wanasike. Um, the person that you supported, the Senate President, former Senate President, Ayim Pius Ayim, had raised um, an issue with, you know, um, sentiments, primordial sentiments within the party. And this particular primary step, you know, ended over the weekend. And he talked about looking at burning issues. So, uh, and we're also looking at the scores um, during the primaries. So I'm asking, if it came down to it, if, if what he's saying was anything to go by, do you think he would have garnered more votes? And secondly, um, many have actually que questioned, you know, the PDP strategy in winning 2023 with a northern candidate emerging, being that a lot of people have been pushing uh, for a southern candidate. And of course, many are saying, let different political parties zone um, you know, the, the tickets to the South. In, in fact, there are several groups who have said that they will not support any political party that fields a Northern candidate come 2023. So in those two prong questions, I'd like to hear your thoughts. So this is what I think. I think the uh, PDP put together a very transparent exercise. Um, the primary was clean, it was open. However, uh, the players played the politics the way they, they did. Um, so, so, from my own perspective, as much, much as I have been clamoring for the emergence of an evil president, on the day of the election, I could clearly see that uh, the South wasn't prepared to win that election. I'll give you an example. One of the master strokes on that day was when someone clearly said he was giving his support to Atika Abubakar. Now, what I would have expected from the Southern contestants was for them to quickly rally around each other and agree to support one of themselves. If they had done that, we would have a fiercer battle. But it didn't happen. And so the delegates were convinced that, you know, we'd rather stick to whoever is going to likely win. 
is not to forget that there are some delegates from the north who voted for WK. Similarly, there were delegates from the south who voted for Atiku. Again, my only resolve to all of this is the fact that Atiku is has clearly proven himself to be a nationalist over the years. So this kind of gives me some comfort, believing that more than anything else, the country needs a unifier right now. This unifier is somebody that is going to make us remember that we are first Nigerians before we are any tribe or religion. Mm -hmm. So my appeal to all sides of the divide is that we should look forward towards progress, towards peace, towards unity, and towards a nation. Quickly, let me ask you this. This is not the first time, like I said in my opening, that the, that the former vice president is emerging. He's been emerging every single time, and he has lost. And that's why I asked that question. But again, is the PDP, again, setting itself up for failure? And what's the guarantee that Atiku will okay, win so, that, so, that so position like for the, the party? Atiku Abubakar has emerged, has presented himself for the primary election seven times. And out of those seven times, he only emerged in 2019 and now 2022. So it's important for us to get this correctly, to know that in all the time he has tried this, he's only been lucky to emerge twice. In 2019 and then this time around. And those two times he also was unable to win the general election. So I ask again, is the PDP setting itself up for failure? Or what has Muhammad changed? Muhammad Buhari won the election, the primary election, four times before he eventually emerged as president. So again, these are all the dynamics of the policy. Okay. The fact that he has tried it seven times and emerged just twice, it is very, very possible that um, he could win this time around. Do not forget that it's going to be contested against APC. And APC has got to put his game correctly. Otherwise, Ajiku might just eventually become a president. So we look for Okay. Well, unfortunately, our time is fast spent. I want to say thank you. Ahmed Buhari uh, is, uh, of, is a former presidential candidate of Sustainable National Party of Nigeria, SNP. And, of course, uh, Samo Wanasike is the local government chairman of Equerry Local Government in River State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be discussing the upcoming APC primaries and the strategies and plans it is going to be deploying for uh, the coming election. Stay with us.